I'll just do a general angle here. Let's do theta equals 7 pi over 6. Okay? So if I was going to do this in my step one, I would just sketch the angle. So I know halfway around a circle is pi, which is 6 pi over 6. If I need to get to 7 pi over 6, that's just going to be an extra pi over 6. Correct? So my angle is roughly going to be right there. Now the important thing, next thing is I want to determine the reference angle. What is the distance from my terminal side to my x-axis? Well, if I know halfway around the circle is 6 pi over 6 and I just went an extra pi over 6, then that reference angle is going to be pi over 6. So step number two, I'll just write theta prime equals pi over 6. Now what I'm going to want to do, step number three, is identify that point on the unit circle. So I go to my first quadrant on the unit circle, because that's really the only thing you need to know. And I know that the first angle, which is pi over 6, has a coordinate point of square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. Right? That's the, I mean, it's listed right there for pi over 6. Right? And that comes from, again, the special right triangle. So I know that angle. And you're going to need to know all of these, pi over 4 and pi over 3. You'll need to know all of those. There's not really much we can get out of the way from that. So I know pi over 6. So it has the same value, but we know the signs are going to be different. So step number 4 is now to evaluate based on, uh, given the trig function, uh, evaluate the trig function given that point. So can we just find like the, now, I guess I could probably rewrite that. Because I don't really want you just to find those values as that you know, quickly. I would like you to also kind of quickly move into step five, which is apply the sign based in that quadrant. So if we look at this point, we know it's the same point as over here. right? But if we look at this in the third quadrant, we know that this point has to be the same, same point, but, but both x and y are negative. So I'm actually going to use this point to evaluate. So now, if I want to find the sine of 7 pi over 6, that is simply just going to be the y coordinate, which is equal to negative 1 half. The cosine of 7 pi over 6 is the x coordinate, which is negative square root of 3 over 2. And then tangent, which is always fun, is y over x. So negative 1 half divided by negative square root of 3 over 2. So we have a fraction divided by a fraction. And hopefully my goal is for this you guys to get to this point and already know what the answer is. But you're going to have to do this a couple times before you start seeing these patterns. So I'll do it slow down first. When you have a fraction divided by a fraction and you're on a test or quiz and you get confused, just remember, guys, you can always multiply by the reciprocal. The negative divided by negative turns to a positive, so I don't need to worry about that. But I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. That's a square root of 3. So that's going to multiply the 1. And therefore, I'll be left with, let's see, that's going to be a um, 2 over 2 square root of 3, which gives you a 1 over the square root of 3, which you can rationalize the denominator to give you square root of 3 over 3. So. Uh, the secant, or cosecant, I'm sorry, cosecant of 7 pi over 6 is just the reciprocal of negative 1 half. That's not too bad, right? That's just going to be negative 2. The secant of 7 pi over 6 is the reciprocal of this. So that's going to be a negative 2 over radical 3. Again, you can rationalize the denominator. And you get negative 2 square root of 3 over 3. And then last but not least is the cotangent of 7 pi over 6. And when we do the cotangent of 7 pi over 6, it's just the reciprocal of this. So negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half. And again, we could just multiply by the reciprocal. Those both go to positive. So multiply by 2 over 1. 
2 over 1. And you'd get 2 square root of 3 over 2, which is just equal to the square root of 3. And again, let's make sense of this. We know this angle's in the third quadrant. If you guys look at your notes from last class period, sine, cosine, cosecant, and secant must be negative. But tangent and cotangent are positive. And we have mathematically were able to confirm that. right? So that's basically the steps. And again, guys, you're going to do this algebra a couple times, and then you're going to start seeing that it happens over and over again. And you guys are going to have to, like, you won't need to keep on doing this. You'll start seeing these patterns. But you're not going to see the patterns unless you're practicing them. And if you are just going to do, like, the easier problems, then you're just never going to get to that point where um, you can do this.